morning. I would like to thank the organizers uh, and the BUS for uh, inviting me for the talk. Our journey into hip arthroplasty started with Sir John Chanley doing his hip, uh, hip cemented hip replacement in the 1960s. It still continues to be a very common and very popular arthroplasty. Today, long, long term results are available. Conventionally, we have been doing hip uh, cemented hip arthroplasty in uh, the door C type of osteoporotic bones. And the registry data shows that at five or at 10 years, the survivorship or the revision rates uh, of uh, uncemented hips are definitely higher as compared to cemented hips, mainly because of these uh, periprosthetic fractures that occur in porotic bones and which need revision. So cemented hips have a lower uh, implant related complications and uh, revision rates. They also have post improved post operative complication uh, outcomes such as residual thigh pain and mobility. So if you go through literature, cemented stems definitely have done better than uncemented stems. But over the years now, the amount of cemented hips are on the decline. The reasons being these kind of catastrophic failures that we have seen. But if you analyze them, we realize that the main reason for the failure was polywear and selecting a better bearing would definitely reduce this uh, fear. Another reason why surgeons nowadays avoid doing cemented hip is the fear of interop complications, the bone cement implantation syndrome and lack of confidence in their own cementing techniques. Another uh, reason is because uncemented is perceived to be easier than a cemented hip. Also old cemented is looked, hip is looked at as an old school uh, kind of a procedure and definitely industry is also pushing towards it because of profit margins in uncemented hips. But can you avoid a cemented hip in these kind of osteoporotic uh, femurs? where there is res hardly any uh, bone stock because of old infection or old trauma. Can you avoid a cemented hip in an, a short patient with a dysplastic hip? Also, cemented hip is definitely 30 to 40% cheaper if, uh, for the same bearing if you choose it. Cemented hips definitely are easier to revise than an uncemented hip. So younger and budding surgeons need to re learn and perfect their cementing techniques and should not just give up on the cementing as, as it's happening nowadays. So if you select a good cemented stem and cement it well, you can definitely have better results. So cemented hip basically stems come into two, uh, in two types, the composite beam or the taper slip type. The older or the Chanley was a typical composite beam uh, type where they are usually collared, they have a rough finish, they have flanges or grooves and the main, uh, main uh, uh, thing is you have to have a strong bond between the bone, cement and the stem. In this kind of a construct, basically that the forces are tra transmitted from the femur from, uh, on, from onto the stem to the tip of the uh, implant and onto the distal femur. So the proximal femur is generally bypassed and you can have some kind of resorption there. Also, uh, perfect bonding needs to be established between the, the bone, the cement, as well as the implant and hence the cementing technique needs to be good and this is not so forgiving. The taper slip type is a more common type. Most of the popular stems are of this type where the typical stem is collarless, it's polished and tapered, double or taper depending on the manufacturers. <clears throat> Here the implant is supposed to subside a few millimeters so that the radial compressive forces are then transferred or converted into the hoof stresses which then load the proximal femur and there is no stress shielding or osteopenia. Here the cementing technique need not be perfect and definitely this is a bit more forgiving kind of an implant and hence this is the, the popular stem that most of, most of us are using. Again, the implant is made up of stainless steel or cobalt. You can have an implant in multiple uh, options of lengths, offsets, as well as uh, uh, thicknesses. You can combine it with anything on the acetabular side and you can have the bearing of your choice. So your bearing is not dictated by it. Again, a cemented stems, you have multiple offsets and lengths for the same canal size. Hence, you can reconstruct the uh, proximal femoral geometry more accurately in a cemented hip. Hence, the limb length discrepancy correct, uh, problem is definitely lesser with cemented hips. You can basically do to whatever surgical approach that you are, con you are um, happy with. The newer retractors definitely allow us to do it through a smaller ap approach. A neck cut is not important if, if it's a collared implant, but you can always use a neck cut guide. Entry is very important, needs to be posterior lateral so that you end up with center of the, into the center of the uh, femoral canal. I feel this is the most important step in a cemented hip. Once you have opened the canal, you need to really wash out all the debris, the fat, the uh, bony particles through your, uh, into your canal and you should have a dry canal at the end of it. Typically, I give a wash up to one to two liters. Uh, pulse lavage definitely would help here. They take some time here, gives, uh, uh, be happy that with whatever you've done and you should end up having a nice dry and a clean canal at the end of it because this has a big implication in the complication that we can have. 
once that is done you can uh, serially uh, broach uh, broach the femur till you reach a desired size if at uh, after broaching if you feel your offsets are not reconstructed accurately as what you have planned then you can definitely change the offsets very easily because the implant comes in multiple offsets use a, a cement restrictor typically we used to use this hardinge restrictor previously now these newer uh, cement restrictors of methyl methacrylate are available typically we place them 1 cm distal to the the tip of the implant after that again i would rather give a i would give a, a thorough lavage to the canal and have a dry canal if there is bleeding you can pack it with hydrogen peroxide but always never forget to vent the canal because uh, hydrogen peroxide also can lead to some moment of embolism i best would be to vacuum mix the cement so as to have a a, a good uh, uniform cement mantle and lesser chances of being complications then a uh, cement pressurization is done using a cement gun and a proximal seal give extra importance to the zone 1 and 7 typically the cementing is inferior in these sites so you can definitely do some digital cementing in these these parts take your implant and introduce it slowly the implant surgeon's thumb can act as a seal on the medials and also prevent the implant from going into varus insert the stem till the desired mark keep it there or sustain uh, keep sustain pressure so as not to uh, to prevent the migration of the implant during uh, polymerization again do a trial reduction check your stability and limb length correction and you can end up with this kind of a nice cemented which looks good and will definitely last longer a minute about uh, the most feared complication the bone cement cement implantation syndrome it is characterized by hypoxia hypotension loss of consciousness can end up with arrhythmia and arrest sometimes it can happen in any cemented procedure a hip or a knee or anything severe reaction is seen in about 3 to 5% of uh, cases mortality can range between 0.1 to 1% according to literature but in severe cases definitely there is a higher 30 degree 30 and 1 year mortality as shown by multiple studies initially it was thought that monomer is the main culprit here but now we know the embolization is the main uh, problem and uh, the emboli going and lodging into the lungs the brain or the heart one minute left cause uh, further problems histamine and complement also plays its role it's now believed that all these uh, all these uh, about four proce uh, processes actually have an impact or lead to the problem and the outcome will depend on what is the patient's uh, physiological response and his reserves Donaldson has classified this into four three grades grade 1 is where the PO2 falls up to 30, 94 and the, uh, the BP falls up to 20% from the baseline as uh, grade 2 is where the PO2 falls to 40 88 and the BP can fall up to 40 and grade 3 is a frank severe uh, collapse where it needs a CPR basically to manage or to avoid this complication we need to anticipate treat detect it early and aggressively manage it typically it's seen in patients with grade uh, asa grade 3 or uh, grade 4 older male patients have a higher chance patients who have previously have pulmonary problems or renal problems have a higher chance osteoporosis metas uh, metastasis and uh, pathological fractures have a higher chance patients on diuretics and warfarin definitely have a higher chance once you have a high risk patient discuss with your team make your own protocol a low dose spinal without sedation is the best anesthesia try and avoid ga the anesthetic is is to be told before we start mixing the cement so that they can maintain the bp up to 20% uh, of the pre existing or the pre induction values they need to oxygenate use the drugs depending on patient to patient etco to need is the first uh, falling etco is the first um, uh, parameter that you can see delirium and dyspnea is also uh, clinically should be noticed and uh, action should be taken and then it's uh, anesthetic need to treat it like a right ventricular failure basically on the surgeon side we need to know when we open the canal when we cement or when we insert the process is a chance of this so on the surgeon side we need to uh, achieve uh, meticulous hemostasis suck out the entire canal and give it 2 minutes nicely wash out the canal and remove all the debris the fat etc prepare a prepare your femur well plug and dry the canal well vent the femur without Uh, without fail inform your team before you start mixing it low viscosity cement and vacuum mix definitely helps Re uh, pressurize the cement using a retro uh, retrograde cementing with the gun and Atul, use a vent atul little wind up please okay and use a shorter stem so why do i still cement my cement my implant because excellent results are there it and with improved techniques definitely results are better it's very easy to learn and uh, teach it's cost effective and definitely can cope up with anatomical variations and it's very easy to revise so i would all still prefer a cemented over my uncemented thank you atul thank you.